Five, four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis, reaching the crest of its historic achievements in space. And being in a rocket ship is amazing, and it rattles and shakes you, and it's hugely powerful, and it's, a, it's an immense experience, but you're inside a rocket ship. But to be outside, to be uh, alone in the universe, protected by nothing but a cloth spacesuit, to be holding on to your spaceship with one hand, in between the world roaring by and the universe, endless and black, a completely endless bucket of pure, darkest complexity that is there next to you the whole time. That is where you really experience what spaceflight is all about. You can see this human invention, this human time machine, this magic ship that has somehow got you to this place that's almost no one has ever been to before. But it's just the stepladder that got you there that allows your eyes to then look out to the endlessness uh, the perfect endlessness uh, of understanding that is the whole universe. And then right beside you, the, the roaring colors and textures of the world. It, it almost has a noise, it's so powerful. As you come across the world at eight kilometers a second, you come around the world every hour and a half. A sunrise takes five seconds because you come zipping around the world and the sun pops up into view and you're blinded by the light and then the sunset is equally as fast. You come roaring around the world into the, the northern lights rippling up under your feet or a huge thunderstorm over Malaysia and the world is just this magic kaleidoscope carpet that's just roaring by given right next to you uh, where you just can't ignore it and you are in the middle of all that. After that experience, everything else uh, is put into perspective. It pales some in comparison. If you were to model the Earth as a basketball, for example, then the amount of atmosphere that we have around that globe is equivalent to like one wrap of saran wrap or tissue uh, around the, the planet. On a sunny day, we look up from Earth and we see blue sky all around. We've got lots of atmosphere, but that's not true. It's just a, a tiny, thin veil that's keeping us alive here on Earth. So I think all astronauts are probably environmentalists before they fly in space. They are certainly environmentalists when, when we come back. I've always had a strong religious belief before I became an astronaut, but looking down at the beautiful Earth, you can't help but look down and think there, there's some creative force be, behind all of that. The universe is huge, immensely huge. With our current telescopes, we have seen over 2,000 planets. And I think all of the astronauts would agree that whatever the belief system was that, that got you into the program and that gave you the strength to do all the things that you're doing, it is deepened and reinforced by the experience of seeing the universe and the world that way. It is a tremendous privilege uh, to be part of this crew. These are good people. And uh, we are going to go live in a place built by the world. And we have great confidence in each other and great confidence in the space station. On Expedition 3435, Chris is accompanied by U.S. astronaut Tom Marshburn and Russian cosmonaut Roman Romanenko. These three squeezed into the capsule of the Soyuz to blast off for their rendezvous with the International Space Station. Lemaire, command confirmed, engines firing. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Tom Marshford, Roman Romanenko, and Chris Hatfield making their way towards the International Space Station. This view, of course, uh, coming from the Soyuz vehicle. Half a meter. Contact confirmed. Contact and capture. Docking confirmed at 6.09 p.m. Moscow time. 
and the hatch is open. Chris Hatfield floating in. The first Canadian commander of the International Space Station returning after 11 and a half years. As commander of the International Space Station, Chris Hadfield was responsible for a crew of five astronauts and helped to run dozens of scientific experiments. He gained media popularity by documenting life aboard the space station, from playing his guitar and recording music to taking extraordinary pictures of the Earth. On May 13, 2013, after spending 144 days aboard the station, the crew from Expedition 3435 departed the International Space Station aboard the Soyuz. Okay, separation confirmed. The crew made its triumphant touchdown in Kazakhstan, successfully completing their amazing mission. On June 10, 2013, Chris Hadfield made a significant announcement. I've decided to retire from government service. This capped a decorated 35-year career as a military pilot and astronaut. For the nine-year-old farm boy who had a lofty dream to become an astronaut, Chris Hadfield has proven that seemingly impossible dreams can come true, that the sky is not the limit.